We start with our NBC News exclusive, a new secretly recorded tape from inside the world of Donald Trump and an interview with a former White House aide who made that tape, Amarosa Manigault Newman. The new tape involves a conversation with President Trump's daughter-in-law and campaign advisor, Lara Trump, one that is detailed in her new memoir. It's called Unhinged. The conversation happened December 16th of last year, just days after she was fired from the White House. A few notes, first of all, on what you will soon hear. Amarosa gave NBC News four audio clips. We are going to play them back to you. Our producer has heard the full version of that tape. We can tell you that these clips are in proper context. Also, during the audio you are about to hear, Lara Trump mentions a New York Times article written by the Times' Maggie Haberman. NBC News believes it is this article, published December 15th, one day before this conversation took place. The headline there, Omarosa leaving the White House, suggests the show will go on, in which she, suge in which she suggests she has a story to tell. Let's get right to our guest, Amarosa Manigault Newman, former White House aide to President Donald Trump, also, uh, perhaps you've heard, author of a new book. Uh, <laughs> before we get to the audio, I do want to ask you about the timing of the release of, of, of these tapes. Why today? You know, I think it's important as people question the credibility of everything that you see in Unhinged. That's what the right has been saying. None of these stories are true. She doesn't have credibility. She can't corroborate the things that are in Unhinged. And I think it's important not only to point to these things, but to also blow the whistle on the corruption of the things that are going on in this family, in this administration, and in this campaign. Let's play the audio. To be clear to our viewers, to be clear to our listeners as well, you provided us again four clips. You selected these clips from a longer conversation that you had with Lara Trump. All of this characterized toward the end of your book. Take a listen. But listen, obviously with like the New York Times article and stuff, you know, it's it's what's the New York Times like, article? The one that the one that um it was not New York Times Day, I guess you did with Maggie Haberman or they wrote about you. It sounds a little like obviously that there's some things back in the back pocket to pull out. Clearly if if you come over with the campaign, like we can't have we gotta Oh God, no. Everybody's positive, right? So the only thing that we have to consider when we're talking salary as far as the campaign is concerned is that, as you know, everything is public. Um, and all the money that we raise and that pays salaries is directly from donors, small dollar donors for the most part. Um, so I know you have, you were making 179 at the White House. And I think we could work something out where we keep you right along those lines. Um, Specifically, let me see, I haven't even added up the numbers, but we were talking about like 15K a month. Uh, let me see what that adds up to. 10 to 12. Yeah, so that's 180,000. Does that sound like uh, a fair deal for you? In, in terms of your position specifically, I really feel like your position would require, you know, you to be able to be flexible in terms of where you are. Sometimes, you know, come to New York for occasional meetings, but um, I would love if you could, you know, occasionally go do speaking engagements and that sort of thing for us. I think you'd be awesome doing that. Um, and so it doesn't really matter where you are. If you're comfortable staying in D.C., then, you know, you're, we're more than happy to have you. We should point out here, no response so far from Lara Trump or the Trump campaign. We have reached out uh, for a comment. We'll talk about the content of the tape in, in just a moment. But, but, but first of all, why give us those four selected clips and not just play out the entire conversation for people who are, are watching or listening who might be thinking you're, you're hiding something? Well, I, first of all, I played the full entire conversation for your producers because that was important for them to verify. But I really wanted to undergird everything that's in this book. Everything you see in quotations can be verified, has been corroborated, and is documented. And these clips are specifically the outline of the scene that I have in Unhinged. Can you characterize uh, what was left out of the tape that we played versus the tape that our producer listened to? You know, there was a lot of back and forth. I had a, a close relationship with this family. She reiterated that Donald Trump just loved me, this family loved me, that they wanted the best for me, they wanted me to, to come in, but she made it very clear that if I joined this campaign, 
that I would have to be quiet. I wouldn't be allowed to talk to reporters. I wouldn't be allowed to say anything against Donald Trump. She, as she stated from her, in her own words, had to keep it positive. You can't be talking about those things. What is this thing you have in your back pocket? I saw this as an attempt to buy my silence, to censor me, and to pay me off $15,000 per month uh, by the campaign. You saw this as hush money? Absolutely. Why do you think Lord Larry Trump made this offer to you? If they just fired you, why, why offer you $15,000 a month to come on in this ambiguous role? Well, that lends to a lot of questions. The president has said he's happy, I was fired, I'm a low life, I'm a dog, all these things. Um, but then you find out behind the scenes, they're saying how awesome I am and great I am and I should come on the campaign. So really, what is it? Which one of it is it? Is it that they supported me or did they want me out? He said he was happy I was fired. At first he said he didn't know I was fired. And then he tweets that he was happy that I was dismissed. This family can't keep their story straight. They can't decide whether they love or hate people. They actually misrepresent that they're being honest to the American people. This is just the beginning of the type of corruption that's going on in Trump world and I am here to blow the whistle. What kind of other corruption? You know, there are things that I write about and then there are things that I'm going to save to share when the time is right. Did, did she ever give you a reason, Lara Trump, during a, a, a subsequent conversation? Did she give you a reason about the firing or why they wanted you back now? Everyone in the Trump family claimed to not know about my firing, from Donald Trump to Ivanka to Jared to uh, Lara. No one knew, so they claim. I'm just not buying that. Why do you believe it was, it was Lara Trump that, that picked up the phone and made the call? Uh, why her? Why a family member? Why not, why not a, a staffer or someone else to offer you this 15000 a month? Well, she was very specific that it was, as we call him, DJT, that it was Donald Trump that uh, wanted her to make this offer to me. It came from the president? That's according to Laura Trump, yes. And, and you would be doing what precisely in this, in this new role? She was very cavalier about it. She's like, you know, maybe you could do some interviews or maybe you could do some speeches. You know, you're very articulate, you know. You the, she used that word. <laughs> yeah. She said you're articulate. You're so articulate. I've known you also. for a while. Did you find that at all offensive? Well, most people wouldn't realize that that is an insult to African Americans to call us articulate as if we haven't mastered uh, the language of the land. But she also was very cavalier. I could basically decide what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. As she stated in the recording, it didn't even matter where I worked, how often I worked, what I did. As long as I signed on the dotted line and accepted this $15,000 a month, it didn't matter to her what I did, what my title was, or what my role or responsibility would be in the campaign. We know that you've, you've talked to the special counsel's office. Um, have you been contacted since you started releasing these tapes by the special counsel's office again? No, you know I can't comment on that. Nor you could. Can I, nor can I comment on the um, arbitration or the fact that Donald Trump has sicked his entire force of his legal team, not only on me, but sending threatening letters to the publisher. He is completely unhinged, pardon the pun, but what you're seeing is the unraveling of the 45th president of the United States. And, and why do you think he's coming after you so aggressively? Well, because he thought he could dismiss me. You know, he thought, you know, that I could be disposed of. But Donald Trump is wrong. He should not only value the people who have been so loyal to him, but he should specifically remember the people who got him where he is. I want to play something that you said on our air a couple days ago mm -hmm. uh, during a conversation with Katie Turr that caught my attention. You were talking about those, those hacked emails, those DNC emails before they were released, the president yes. knowing about it. Here's what you said. You were instructed, according to your book, to bring up the emails at every point you could at the end of the 20, 2016 that's, that's campaign, correct. Hillary Clinton's emails. Yes, that was our talker. Did Donald Carter's Trump talker. know about those emails before they came out? Absolutely. He knew about them? Yes. He knew what was coming out before WikiLeaks yes. released them? Uh, are you speculating or, or do you have proof? Because here's the thing, that, by and large, I mean, I haven't finished the whole book, that's the most explosive allegation that you've made, and it's not even in the book. Yeah, there was, there's some things that are involved in this investigation, the Mueller investigation, that I was very careful not to put in the book. So you do have proof? I can't even talk about the things that I talk with them. I can't talk about the things I've submitted to them. But I want you to know that I will fully continue to cooperate with this investigation.
And you stand by what you said on our air a few days ago. I have been able to verify every single thing that I put in the book. I've verified everything I've stated. And every single time the Trump people challenge me, I bring the receipts. Um, a fellow over at Fox News said earlier this week that you have, quote, outsmarted the president. Do you agree? Hey, it's the art of the deal. What's, what's the end game here? I mean, because our understanding is that you have more of these recordings. Are you planning to release all of the recordings? Or are you planning on releasing some of the recordings? How are you going to decide which recordings to release and when to release them? Well, I'm now faced with this um, legal action from the president in an attempt to silence me. So you'd have to ask the question, what is he afraid of? Why is he being so aggressive to shut me down? And why is he trying to stop the publishing of the book? What does Donald Trump have to hide? In one of the earlier recordings I shared with you, you know, General Kelly said that the staff and everyone that works there answers to him. So is it John Kelly that's running the White House or Donald Trump? It's, it seems to me that there are people pulling the strings behind the scenes with Donald Trump, and we'd have to question what's really going on over there. Shortly before we came on the air, there was a report from an MSNBC contributor, also a writer at Vanity Fair named Gabe Sherman, um, who indicated, according to his sources, the president is fuming in private. He has asked his attorney general to arrest you. Not mm -hmm. clear at this point on what charges, but he's asked that you be arrested. Uh, there's an excerpt from the, from the article there. Are you concerned at all about being arrested? Um, well, what Mr. Nixon, I mean, Mr. Trump does, will be brought to light. Every action that he takes against me jeopardizes him and his presidency. So I think that you should watch his behavior and how he's unraveling. And I don't have any fear. I have a whole community of faith that's behind me, praying for me. And no matter who is in the Oval Office, Donald Trump needs to remember that God is still on the throne. You wrote something in the book, uh, and I know you got to go, but I want to read this, this excerpt. This is uh, the part about the chief usher there, Angela Reed, um, and this caught my attention for, for a variety of reasons. On May 5th, this is on page 242, mm -hmm. on May 5th, the head usher of the White House, Angela Reed, the first woman and second African-American to hold that position, was fired. Although Reed was a carryover from Obama, having held the job since 2011, it was not considered a political position, and it was unusual for an incoming president to fire an usher. I was upset because it meant one less black woman in the building less than two months after Trump fired Sir Michael Singleton, Ben Carson senior advisor at HUD, because of an article he'd written for The Hill that was critical of Trump. I made a point of asking everyone in the senior staff about Reed's firing. Quote, we can't keep getting rid of black people for flimsy reasons, I told a number of people. As comms director for OPL, Office of Public Liaison, I need to explain why this woman was let go. The official line, we don't discuss personnel matters. The unofficial line, that she wasn't very well liked and allegedly Trump didn't approve of her handling of his tanning bed. I'd heard he was unhappy with her efforts to procure the bed, to bring it into the East Wing securely, to find a discreet place for it, and to set it up properly. Also, apparently Reed just hated him and didn't hide her feelings about it. Are you alleging that the president fired this woman because she couldn't secretly get the tanning bed in to the, to the, to the White House and that she didn't like the president? Is that the allegation? That's actually what I outlined in the book. This is a part of the palace intrigue that I made sure that people were aware of. Hey, let's just all say that Donald Trump's complexion is natural. Let's just all agree on that. Or let's just imagine that he lays out on the balcony in the White House. Whatever the case is, he fired this woman without a real reason. And it's just a pattern of how this White House behaves. The uh, RNC um, is aware of your public appearances promoting the book. They have, I, I think they dropped this video maybe 20 minutes ago. Uh, we want to play a snippet. I want to get your reaction um, to this video. I was so happy when Donald Trump declared that he was going to run. You all know him as the president. I know him as a friend. I know his heart. But Donald Trump is a trailblazer on women issues. So not only do I support him as a human being who has incredible character and a great vision, but his policies affect my community where I live in Los Angeles, and that's really why I stand by him. And I believe that you will see that this president is going to be incredible for this country, and I am excited about what's happening with this administration. I'm very honored to be a part of it. He was the right choice for America. When I say Trump train, I want you to say choo-choo. Y'all ready? Trump train! Trump train! Trump train! We, we should note you're standing there next to Lara Trump in that video. How do you square that with, with this? 
How hard is it for you to sit there and watch that Omarosa? Well, first of all, I, I completely understand why they would put this copulation together because I'm one of the few African Americans in his orbit. Yeah, they would put their greatest hits together and that would compile about 0.0% of the diversity that they have at the RNC and in the Trump administration. They should keep rerunning that video because that was the best thing that happened to this administration. So if that's the best that they have, I'll just say this to them. I am not going anywhere. I'm not going to be bullied. I'm not intimidated. And I'm going to go toe to toe with him. Everything he throws at me, believe me, my tapes are much better than theirs. You're going to release more tapes? If I need to, I'll do what I have to do to protect myself. How are you going to determine whether you need to? Oh, we'll see. He's threatening to get me arrested. He's trying to intimidate my publisher and trying to intimidate me. Donald Trump has met his match. We will leave it there. I'm Marissa Manigault Newman. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.